Hello, I'm Linda from Barlati's Body Blitz and here's cute little Minnie on her chair bed. Today we're doing walk away belly fat, 7,000 step walk. So we're going to be doing stepping, walking, all different ways of just keeping our body moving for 7,000 steps, which is going to be about 45 minutes of continuous work. We're going to have 60 second intervals just to keep up with different variations so that we don't get bored. But if at any time you prefer just to walk in place and not do any of the variations, just walk the entire 45 minutes, then definitely do that. Now, if you are wearing a step monitor, you may find by the end of the workout that you have stepped more or less than 7,000 steps. And there's many different reasons for that because when we're doing moves that are not actually just walking, it might be a stepping or a step touch, those are not going to register the same way as if you're just walking. And if the step monitor is on your wrist, then it is to do with your arm movements more so than what you're doing with your legs, okay? That's how it's registering each step. So as long as you are doing the workout, getting your heart rate slightly elevated for 45 minutes, getting a bit of a sweat on, then that's all you need to worry about. You don't need to be pedantic about the steps. You just wanna keep moving, okay? So we're pressing start and we're going to start simply walking in place. And most of the time we're going to just walk to the beat of the music. So if you're finding that it's a little bit fast for you, then definitely just slow it down. So as I said, because if you're wearing a wrist monitor, it is to do with your arms moving as to how many steps you're clocking up, make sure you keep using those arms. So because we are walking at a quite fast pace to start off with, we're gonna keep it quite small. You don't need to kind of pick up your knees too much, you just wanna walk in place. And the other thing you can do, if you prefer to, is whenever we're going back to straight walking, walk around the room. Do whatever you want, whatever you feel comfortable doing, as long as you keep moving. So let's keep going like this. Lots of simple variations today, so nothing tricky for the brain. Five more seconds. Deep breaths. Now just out, out, in, in. So we're pretty much just walking in place, but we're going a little bit wider and then back underneath our body. Out, out, in, in, keep those arms moving. And if you want to start picking up the knees a little bit more, why not? You go ahead. You want to make sure your tummy's pulled in, your shoulders are down and back, you've got a nice straight spine. Keep pumping those arms. And if you want to, go slightly off the beat of the music and just slow it down a little bit, you definitely can do that. You don't have to keep up with the music. In fact, if you don't want to listen to me chatting away, you can even mute me and just put on your own music. We're going to step touches next. Step touch. So whenever you step touch, you can go up and down a little bit and that is going to elevate the exercise, burn a few more calories because you're using those large lower body muscles. Swinging your arms this time, forward and back. So you can see already, because we're using a larger range of motions with our arms, it's not going to register as many steps as when we were going double time with those arms. So please keep that in mind. Whenever you're doing workouts that say X amount of steps, it really depends on the speed that you move your arms as to how many steps you're clocking up. 10, nine. We're gonna do some little knee lifts next. So we're going to keep our arms the same and just bring our knee up. It doesn't have to be high. The other supporting leg is nice and soft. The other thing you have to consider with step counters is it doesn't differentiate between someone who's just walking along at a particular pace 
And another person who might be walking at exactly the same pace, but is wearing a weighted vest, holding on to light weights, wearing ankle weights, or whatever else people do to accelerate their walking. It's still gonna count the same number of steps, but obviously, you're gonna be working a lot harder with any of those other variations. So, once again, don't be pedantic about exactly how many steps. Think more about the exertion and the time. How long are you spending working out? Okay, reach overhead and tap out to the side. Deep breath. So whenever you elevate your arms above your heart, you are going to start getting a little bit of an increased heart rate because your blood has to pump further up, right? So your heart is working harder. Keep pushing. Nice pointed toes, stretch away long. So belly fat is one of those things that is annoying for a lot of people. And walking is definitely a way that can help you to shed unwanted belly fat. But there are many things to consider as to why we have that belly fat in the first place. Now push in front and heels in front. It could be a hormonal thing. It could be a stress related thing. It could be to do with deficiencies. It could be to do with bad sleep. There are many different reasons. It could just be due to the fact that you're eating more than your body needs. Recently, I heard some experts talk about it and they were saying that certain people simply store fat in different areas. Some people, even men, can store fat predominantly or first off in, on their abs or on their belly. And this means that when they lose body fat, even if they become quite lean, it could be the last place to lose it. So you can see some really slim people with a bit of a belly pooch. And that's simply because that is the place your body prefers. Now push up overhead and same side tap out. So you're staying more upright now, you're not kind of leaning like we did before, just push up overhead. Maybe down and up. So it is frustrating if you're one of those people that has really been working hard at the gym, has been eating right, is quite slim overall, but still has that little pooch. And what I heard from this particular podcast was that in order to get rid of it, you have to get to a low enough fat percentage, body fat percentage, that your body will use up that stored fat, the one that's kind of the last little bit to go. And once you do that, it will be easier to keep it off. It's just getting it off in the first place. We're going two across and two back. So I don't know how true that is for everyone, but for some people, definitely, that could be the truth. They were talking about men specifically, so less hormonal influence there. But perhaps that is what it takes. If it's really something that bothers you a lot, maybe you're going to have to go through a period of cutting and getting to a really lean body fat percentage, losing that fat, and then refueling, bulking up with some really good nutritional food to build muscle. In the bulking phase, increasing your weight training so that you don't put it on again. We're gonna go forward, forward, back tap, forward, forward, back tap. So one might think, oh, but if I put on heaps of weight, after I lose it, I'm just going to put it all back in the same spot. Well, try to 
not only just think about losing fat, but then maintaining a healthy lifestyle. And then you won't put on body fat. You can put on more mass, but it can be just a little bit of body fat and mostly muscle. So it all depends on how you, sh you cut or shred and how you bulk. And there are many amazing programs out there that you can follow for men and for women. So that is basically just looking at it from a very simplistic point of view that it is just excess body fat. Okay, we're gonna go front and front and side, side. Front, front, side, side. So of course, what you eat is going to matter and many other lifestyle factors, whether you drink alcohol, which contributes to a lot of excess sugar intake, whether you're sleeping well, which contributes to low or high cortisol, cortisol being a hormone that is definitely not your friend when it comes to storing fat. So there are many things to consider, but that is one way of looking at it that I heard and found quite interesting and multiple people were chiming in saying that they had had the same experience that the only way they were able to lose the belly fat was to drastically cut their body fat in general and then to slowly increase bulk again but with lean muscle rather than eating junk and putting on the fat again in the same area that it was stored in. Now, I think I just went an extra interval, so we'll just keep going to the end of it. Sometimes I'll just be chatting away and I'm not even watching the timer. I hope this is going by as fast for you as it is for me. I'm finding this flying by. In front and in front. Are you keeping up the pace with me? I'm actually getting a little bit puffy. You never want to get too puffed. You want to definitely be able to still talk. But a little bit of a breath going is always a good thing. We're going to do butt kicks next. So, butt kick. Let's do bicep hammer curl arms. Kick your butt, maybe low to high again. Maybe a little bounce, up to you if you want to add some little jumps and bounces, you can definitely do that. The other thing I heard about belly fat is for women in particular who maybe have not got regular periods or maybe you're perimenopausal or maybe you're menopausal, if you are not getting a regular period, it means your body is going to have trouble getting rid of excess estrogen. And from the podcast that I have listened to, excess estrogen is stored in belly fat. Don't ask me why. I haven't investigated that far ahead, but I'll try and let you know. So side to side. We're gonna come center, lift the leg. This one's actually harder than it looks because that side leg raise uses a lot of core stability. Stop me from falling over. So if that is the case with you, that you have irregular periods for whatever reason, maybe it is time to get your hormones checked out. Maybe there are underlying issues that are causing hormone imbalance, which are then causing You'd have irregular periods, which are then causing excess estrogen to be stored in belly fat. It seems like there are a lot of factors and sometimes it can get a bit overwhelming, I know. Okay, we're gonna do a grapevine. Step behind, step together. It can seem very overwhelming, but what I would suggest as I have talked about in some of my other videos, make yourself 
and experiment. Get a journal of some kind, whether it be one online or an actual paper journal, and experiment on yourself. Give yourself a good amount of time for each variation of that experiment and see how your body responds. Every single person is completely different. So you really cannot find someone else's method and just apply it to yourself. You need to just find what works for you. And there may be multiple tiny little changes, double and double. Multiple little changes you can make to your diet, to your lifestyle choices, to your exercise regime. And all of those could contribute then to you finally losing that belly fat. And in the meantime, you might find you end up having the best health of your life. So that little belly fat, or big belly fat, whatever it is for you, could be the key to you finding, finding out what really works for your body and then having a much healthier lifestyle, attitude, self-esteem, mental and physical outlook for the future. Okay, so maybe it's a good thing. Let's just walk in place. Maybe it's, it's actually a blessing to have that belly fat because if it wasn't bothering so, you so much, maybe you would never start looking for things in your life or in your lifestyle that are actually not helpful or healthy. That's what happened to me. I had to get really sick for me to start addressing dysfunctional behaviors and mindsets. Not taking care of myself enough. Thinking I was healthy, thinking I was eating healthy, thinking I was you know, doing the right type of exercise, thinking that I wasn't really that stressed, all of those things I had to really address when I got sick. So in a way, once again, blessing in disguise, right? Five, four, three, two, and one. We're gonna do taps and taps. So this time we're bringing our heel up and just tap with your opposite fingertips. When life gives you lemons, right? Make lemonade. And this could be a longish process, people. How long have you had the belly fat? Years, 10 years, 20 years, how long? So don't expect it to just leave overnight. It may take some time to experiment, but in the meantime, through each month or two, however long you give yourself for each variation of your experiment, you are learning more and more about yourself. You are becoming healthier and healthier. So, invest in yourself. Three, two, one. We're gonna tap behind, but both hands up and down. So kind of angle your body towards the back and twist through the waist. You don't have to look there. So I'm tapping the side of my foot And look, I know people are busy. I'm busy too. And people that have multiple children, cats, dogs, husbands, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever is going on in your world, aged parents that you might be looking after, I know life is busy. But we only get one life. And I used to be the person that looked after everyone else before I looked after myself. And once again, getting sick taught me that that is not the right attitude at all. We cannot be our best self for anyone else if we're not taking care of ourselves. Okay, we're gonna go across for two and heel for two. How about these arms and heel in front? Big and wide, heel and heel. So look out for yourself first, just like when you're in an airplane 
and they tell you to put your mask on before your child's. Give yourself a lifeline, people. Look after your health. Invest a little bit of time in yourself. The fact that you're already working out regularly, hopefully regularly, or that you're working out with me right now, that shows that you have a level of self-love. I'm hoping that you're not working out because you hate your body, because you wanna lose weight. I'm hoping that the attitude is you want to work out because you care about yourself and you want the best for yourself. Okay, we're going to go swing your arms and we're going to, whoops, we're going to do those little heels, but I'm actually going to do a little, almost like a little jump kick. Jump in front, jump in front. Figure eight arms. This one can get the heart rate up if you really sit kind of into it. Big sweeping arms and a little bit of a jump before you place that heel in front. And if you don't have much self-love because of whatever reasons, that's another thing you can experiment on. There are so many amazing podcasts nowadays that can help you cultivate self-love. Keep going. Okay, walk in place. Deep breaths. If you need any help with trying to maybe find some people online that can give you helpful information about learning to love yourself and learning to let go of maybe past trauma, things like that, then you can always contact me on my YouTube channel or my website and let me know what you need and I'll hook you up with what I've learned or the people I've come across. So this is supposed to be a community where we help each other. So I'm hoping that I can help you, not only with exercise, but with all the things that I learned through my journey, my healing journey. And I'm far from there, people. I still have a long way to go, but I've learned a lot along the way, so I'm totally happy to share that with you guys. Okay, we're gonna go like a little star jump, but I'm not actually lifting off, I'm just kind of bouncing. The same goes with eating and diets. You know, people going on diets rather than making a lifestyle change. If you're going on a diet or trying to lose weight because you hate your body, as opposed to you're wanting to eat well to fuel your body because you love it, that's a really different perspective. And when you hate your body and you're just punishing yourself by eating really bland foods and cutting calories way too low, Often you'll fall off the bandwagon and then you won't just eat normally or moderately. Often you will end up binging, two, three, tap, one, two, three, tap. Often you'll end up binging and you'll end up putting on more weight than before because the motivation is wrong. So when you're going out for dinner and someone says, oh, do you want to share some dessert? You're going to be like, oh no, I can't, I'm on a diet. Rather than saying, oh, actually I'm going to pass because, you know, I, I know that sugar is not great for my body and I'm trying to look after myself. Or maybe sometimes you do have that dessert and that's okay too because the benefit of having a yummy dessert with friends, with family, and that social aspect of it could outweigh the negatives of eating that extra bit of sugar. It's not all about food and exercise, people. We're going on an angle, front and back. Now, I want you to pull down. Pull down as if you've got grabbing a rope and pulling it. Maybe bend towards that leg a little bit. 
up and down. Getting your glutes involved. Social connection is one of the most important aspects of life to ensure good health and longevity. So if you are cancelling plans because you don't want to eat out so that you don't ruin your diet or you'd rather go to the gym, it could be counterproductive, people. You could be shooting yourself in the foot. It's one meal, one exercise, one gym session missed, other side. That one gym session missed is not going to equal even a point something amount on the scales. It's all about consistency and what you do overall on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you have the opportunity to go out, have some fun, be normal, maybe not watch what you eat for once, eat the dessert, have the cocktail, not that I endorse alcohol, but I'm talking about be balanced. It will make you happier. You'll spike dopamine. Your stress levels will come down. Have a balanced lifestyle. And maybe that itself will help with your belly fat. Okay, we're just gonna go. How about we're just gonna go like this with your arms up like a little side to side hop. Maybe you wanna do it slightly different than me. Sweep your arms. You choose, make it your own workout. Just have fun with it. Deep breath and you don't have to jump. You can just step and step. But if you wanna jump, and twist and have fun, do it. Yeah, there's actually this term called orthorexia, which is if you're overly obsessed with what you eat and try to make it perfect, just walk in place. That got my heart rate up. If you're jumping a little bit like me, maybe you got your heart rate up too. How about we punch up and down as we march? Big punches. So orthorexia, in my opinion, should apply not just to people who try to be perfect with the way they eat, but also any other lifestyle behavior that you are trying to perfect and that stresses you out. Maybe it's exercise. Maybe you're an over-exerciser. And when you can't get your workout in, you fall apart or you get angry and frustrated. Maybe it's sleep. I know sleep is super important. Okay, we're gonna do punches across and across. A Little bit faster, across and across. Tummies are in. Try not to twist your hips, twist through your waist. So sleep is super important and trying to go to bed and get up at the same time of day each day is actually known to improve so many core morbidities by 60%, isn't that crazy? It's actually more important to keep your circadian rhythm the same, so the same time going to bed, same time waking up, than it is to get eight hours sleep or to the duration of the sleep. So, of course, I can see that this is extremely important, but if you have a special event on, someone's birthday, someone's wedding, and you're gonna be up a few hours later, don't beat yourself up about it. Don't look at your Fitbit and think, oh my goodness, my sleep score, up and down, just one side. Little um, squats with side punches. Don't beat yourself up if your sleep score isn't great that day. Okay, you've got to live life. 
And every now and then, you might have a late night. Just don't make it a habit. So, fast punches. Clocking up lots of steps without actually stepping. But this is burning more calories than those steps, I promise you. You're squatting and you're punching at the same time. Are you going low? Get your butt back, weight is in the heels. Or it might be alcohol. Once again, not advocating alcohol in any way. Up and down. But maybe you have decided you're not drinking at all and you choose not to go out with your friends anymore. Maybe that isn't the best choice. Maybe social interaction with your friends every now and then and having a few drinks is a better choice. Maybe just one drink. That enjoyment factor of being with your friends, feeling normal, feeling like you don't have to restrict everything, is actually going to help you be less stressed overall. But I know it's easier said than done, people. Don't worry. I do understand that if you've had a certain mindset for most of your life around diet and exercise, it is hard to switch. That's why once again, we're going to punch overhead. Once again, I say go back to making yourself that experiment. Journaling. Trying to change those mindsets that you know are broken, you know it, but they've become so ingrained that you don't know how to change them. Get help. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go and see a psychologist. There are people online that are amazing at this stuff. Marisa Peer being one of them, she'll sort you out. Start watching her podcast. She will help you to change your negative mindsets. She's a magician at that. And I'm sure there's many other people that are equally talented at helping others to change the way they think. Okay, we're going to go one, two, three, and two knees. One, two, three, two knees. Two, three, two knees. Knee and knee. One, two, three, knee and knee. Really punch as if you're punching something, and then twist through the waist when you bring that knee up. One, two, three. This one, I have to concentrate so I can't talk to you at the same time. Two, three. One, nice job, let's just walk in place. So, pump those arms. So when it comes to just practical things that you can do to help you with burning up sugar in particular, and I have talked extensively about why sugar is kind of the enemy when it comes to belly fat in a my 5,000 step walk as well as on my YouTube channel in some of my coffee talks, on optimizing nutrition, on keeping energy levels stable, check those out. But basically, sugar is what you want to try and get out of your bloodstream as quickly as possible. And an amazing way of doing that is obviously through exercise. And walking cardio exercise that's not too high in intensity burns sugar really well. So, how about incorporating more steps? Can you do a tiny jack? Step in front, jack otherwise, one side in front. But why not? Little tiny hop. So, 
ways that you can continue to get rid of that sugar in your bloodstream. Every time you eat carbohydrate, do some sort of movement afterwards. Don't just sit down and watch television or go back to your desk if you're at work after lunch. Literally walk up and down the stairs for five minutes. Do 30 to 50 air squats. Do something to drive that sugar into your muscles. That's where it gets stored. That is your best bet for activating your fat burning system. That one got my heart rate up. We're gonna stay on one side and just do knee pulls. So there's two systems in your body. There's a sugar burner energy system and there's a fat burner energy system. You might know it as ketones or the keto diet tries to put you into this fat burning energy system. When there's sugar in your system, your body can't access that fat burning system or go into ketosis. Sounds complicated, I know. But if you have a look at my video on fasting, it explains it all in detail. But basically, what you're trying to do is get sugar out of your bloodstream as quickly as possible after you've eaten. And obviously eat less sugar if you can, then you don't have to do all that work. Okay, other side. So what else can you do to get more steps in? Say your goal for the first month experiment is just to do more walking, more cardio, because you haven't been focusing on that. How do you get more steps in? Rather than trying to do a long workout every day that you may not be able to fit into your schedule, set yourself little targets throughout the day. Maybe if you're wearing a step counter, maybe you want to do X amount of steps before midday. And if you don't hit that target, it's gonna be harder to hit your full daily target. So you can break your day up into quarters maybe, and make sure you're hitting all your steps at those quarters so that you know you're gonna hit your goal by the end of the day. That way you don't have to make it up side to side and then sweep and sweep, up and up, sweep and sweep, up and up, sweep and sweep. These arms are kind of a little bit stunted. That's okay, we'll just go with it. We've only got one interval, up and up, sweep and sweep. Wide steps across and then sink low. So I'm adding together a lot of the exercises you've already seen, so it's not too hard on your brain. Sweep and sweep. So by the first quarter, if you can see you're already a few hundred steps behind, why not take a really short five minute walk, a power walk, wherever you are. We're gonna prance in place. Pick up your heels, keep your toes down prance in place and push up and down with those hands. This one gets the heart rate up. Just go for a little power walk or find the nearest stairs, go up and down the stairs. Or even just do some of these in place or a fast walking in place. Put on your favorite song that you know has a really fast beat and walk to the beat for a few minutes. You watch that step counter go up and then you're back on track. And if you have to do five little, or four little intervals like that throughout the day, it takes you five minutes at a time, and then you hit your step target no problem at night, and you don't have to kind of make up for a whole huge amount of steps at the end of the day when you're tired, then that's a better way of doing it, don't you think? Breathe. <laughs> okay, back corner, tap and tap. Tap and tap. So straight leg, tap to the back corner, hinging forward slightly from the hips. 
this workout is flying by people. Maybe pull your elbows back. So fingertips together at the front. We've kept up the pace. Definitely got into close to a zone two cardio with this one. A really good fat burning zone. Yes, it's not a really tough workout, but this workout is for recovery. It's great for muscle recovery. It's basically for cardiovascular health, for mobility, for stability, for so many things. Okay, up, up, and heel and heel. So middle and heel, heel. Don't see this as a super hard workout. See this as a feel good workout that is doing good things for your body. What other ways can you fit in extra steps? Take the stairs instead of the lift, park your car a bit further away, choose to walk to the shop instead of taking the car, Walk your dog a few more times a week. I'm sure the dog will appreciate it. Be creative. Many wanted a light refreshment. Okay. We're on the last five rounds of 60, 60 seconds. So let's really finish strong. Walk with me. Now that we're warm, swing those arms, get those knees up, tummies in, and walk it. The other thing you can do, add some light hand weights. Add some light ankle weights if you're finding you want to take it up a notch. What else can you do to just move more? Not necessarily walk, but get more movement in. While you're brushing your teeth, do some squats. While you're watching TV, do some leg raises. There's many ways that you can keep moving. And it's just creating a new habit. Once you create the habit, you'll do it each time. All right, we're going to do some fast, little, tiny, wide ones. So pick up, it's like a little football run, but you don't even need to run. You can just pick up the heels a bit and pump your arms. Now is the time to look at your step counter and really move those arms and those legs to make up the last few steps if you're not anywhere close to the 7,000 goal yet. So what can you do? What can you give me in these last four rounds or three and a half rounds? What can you give me? Let's just really ramp it up. 20 seconds of this round. And if you need to take a break, march in place and then go again. Go again. Come on. Come on, you can do it. This is just a low intensity workout. Okay, can you do little tiny ski jumps? If not, just do those little heels again. If you wanna jump with me, little tiny ski jumps with arm pumps. Keep your knees soft, tummies are in. Keep going. If you want to do doubles, you can do doubles. Come on. Deep breath. So I really hope you learned some tips through this walk and talk session. Definitely ask me questions. If there are any, email me or comment on my videos. And I will definitely, let's just bounce in place. Drive your arms, double heel pump. So it's like a little lift off like the prancing we did before. 
I'm just lifting my heels, I'm not actually lifting my toes. But if you want to do a little bounce, you can. I'm just trying to keep the impact out of it a bit more. Drive those arms, up and back. This sort of cardio exercise is amazing for lifting your mood. So whenever you feel life is overwhelming, you've got a lot of stuff on your plate, and you're thinking maybe I shouldn't work out today, the answer to that is yes, you should. I promise you, change your state physically, it will change your state mentally. Do something that you enjoy. Two across, two to the side, then two in the center. Two across, two to the side, then two in place. Now, either walk it, if you want a single step, then you can do that. This is your last interval. Come on. Punch overhead. Get low. Definitely keep it low impact if you prefer. But pump those arms. You can do it. Stay here to the end. Just here to the end. Big punches. Up. And one. Okay, so deep breath in. Cool down from those last few intervals by just walking in place until your heart rate comes completely down. Maybe stretch if you want to stretch, but to be honest, with walking workouts, your body is just warm and it's being mobilized. So you don't really need to stretch that much unless you're the sort of person that gets really sore legs, hips, ankles, then definitely do stretch. But I'm so happy that you were able to join me today. Hope you got something out of this walk and talk. I hope that we have worked a little bit towards helping you with that belly fat. And I so look forward to walking again with you very soon. Bye for now.